Thank you for watching this DPL9 tutorial video series. This is the third and final video in a series that has shown you how to build a decision analysis model in the decision tree focus modeling mode in DPL9. In this video, I will make the initial decision asymmetric and will finish adding events to the tree. Finally, I will run an analysis on the model to produce results. Recall that the two alternatives of the production expansion decision have different sources of uncertainty. Consequently, I need to change this decision node's outcome grouping to be asymmetric. To do so, I'll select the branches of the decision node and will check the asymmetric box within the decision tree instance group. Now instead of having a single endpoint or connection point for both alternatives, each alternative has its own. The rest of the subtree has detached from the node. I will drag and place the subtree onto the build new and emerging endpoint to reconnect it. I'll also drag the two endpoints away from one another to create more space for the other events. We will encounter all of the events plus two additional ones for the expand and developed alternative, so I'm going to add an instance of the market test results and capacity events to this alternative via the decision tree instance add command. Now I'm ready to add the two uncertain events that will occur only for the expand and develop alternative to the tree. First is the supply disruption uncertainty, for which I'll name the outcomes to be none, some, and severe. The values for this uncertainty are a percentage of demand, or capacity, whichever is less. There is a 5% chance that there will be no disruptions, so I'll enter a 1, or 100%, for the none outcome. There is a 70% chance of some disruption, for which I'll enter a value of 0.9. This means that 90% of demand will be served in this scenario. Lastly, there is a 25% chance that disruptions will be severe. I'll enter a 0.4 or 40% for a value. I'll link this event to the spreadsheet using the Links tab of the Node Definition dialog. I'll set the radio button within the Calculation Links section to Microsoft Excel. DPL assumes I'm linking to the same spreadsheet as the rest of the nodes of the model. I'll click the Range Names button to bring up the Range Names dialog where I'll select Supply Disruption from the list. Now for the last event, Tariffs. There are two outcomes, yes and no. Trade experts consulted say there is a 70% chance the government in the emerging market will apply a 5% tariff to sales there. For no, I'll enter a zero. I'll use the Links tab again to link the event to the spreadsheet. I need to add the rest of the events starting with Demand Developed to the Expand and Developed alternative. There's a quick and concise way to do this in DPL by performing a subtree. To do so, I'll select the Demand Developed node and the Tariffs Levied endpoint at the same time using Control Click. With both selected, I'll click the Decision Tree Instance Perform Subtree button. You now see a Chance node with a lowercase a in it just before the Tariffs Levied endpoint. That same label has been applied to the Demand Developed node. In effect, I have copied the subtree to the node where it is referenced, but without the redundancy and inconvenience of actually having two copies of the same group of nodes. Now I'm ready to run the model in order to see what the optimal decision strategy is. I'll request the same outputs as last time. The policy tree is activated and indicates that the addition of the supply disruption and tariff events has made an impact on the optimal expansion strategy. The optimal decision policy is to build a new production facility in the emerging market, but it's a close call. Furthermore, the optimal capacity level still depends upon the market test results. If the results are poor, ACME should build for medium capacity, otherwise ACME should build for large capacity. If I look at the initial decision alternatives chart, I can see that this is a really tough choice. The expand and developed has a slightly higher upside but a more significant downside. The probability of losing money in the venture is about 15% for the build new and emerging alternative and 25% for the expand and developed. In the end, Acme Corp decision makers have a deeper understanding of the decision overall and are on board with the strategic direction to be taken. This is the conclusion of the third and final video of the series. I would encourage you to request a free 21-day trial of DPL9 Professional from our website if you'd like to try building this model on your own. There is a link to download the spreadsheet containing the financial calculations for the model both within the video description and on our website.